Without warning, a storm of howls broke out fierce and wild all about the camp. A great host of wargs had gathered silently, and was now attacking them from every side at once. Fling fuel on the fire, cried Gandalf to the hobbits. Draw your blades and stand back to back. In the leaping light, as the fresh wood blazed up, Frodo saw many gray shapes spring over the ring of stones. More and more followed. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are going to be taking a look at the wargs of Middle-earth, what they are, their most famous appearances, and so forth. Some related articles and videos that helped in the creation of today's video may be found in the description and cards, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Wargs are, as described by Tolkien in the footnote of one of his Tolkien letters, number 297, to Mr. Rang, to be wolves inhabited by evil demonic spirits. In The Hobbit, they are said to be evil wolves over the edge of the wild. Now, they do seem distinct from wolves themselves and even werewolves in the Legendarium, seeming to possess heightened intelligence and even ways to communicate beyond simple wolves having their own dreadful language, as it is described. I have a video on the werewolves of Middle-earth from a few years ago, but ultimately they seem to be similar in my mind to wargs being evil spirits that inhabited wolf-like creatures. However, in The Lord of the Rings, Gandalf mentions that Sauron has werewolves and wargs as servants, so there must be some differences involved. Perhaps it is in the nature or degree of strength in either the evil spirits or the bodies of these creatures that makes them different from one another. The origin of wargs is generally unknown. Yet they are certainly of a different nature than Huon, the Hound of Valinor, for instance, and seem more akin to the other servants of Morgoth and Sauron, so it is highly likely that they were bred by one or both of the Dark Lords or their servants, and have no relations to other sorts of good type of dogs, such as Huon. Regardless, wargs seem to be somewhat of another legacy from Norse mythology within Tolkien's works, as according to the scholar Tom Shippey, Tolkien's spelling, and even the concept of wargs, combine elements of wolves from Old Norse and Old English cultures and languages. With that being said, there are no really good wargs or wargs that side with the free peoples in Tolkien's works. Wargs are strictly evil creatures working alongside goblins and orcs. We see them in a few moments in the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. First, Upon the edge of the Wilderland in Rovanion, they pursue Thorin's company in 2941 of the Third Age into the trees on the eastern edge of the Misty Mountains, even as they were going to meet the goblins to organize a raid on the villages of the Woodsmen of Mirkwood. The wargs surrounded the company, refusing to let them leave their trees, until Gandalf's fiery pine cones drove them back. The company would escape the wargs and goblins with the help of the eagles. Yet they would not forget this, pursuing the company until meeting the brutality of Beorn, as Gandalf had burnt the warg chief's nose. But they would regroup eventually for the Battle of Five Armies, letting orcs ride upon them during it. Some readers say that while four of the armies were men, elves, dwarves, and orcs, the last army was the wargs, while others say that the final army was actually the bats. However, they were defeated at this battle, and they would vanish, likely only for a time, from the woods of Rovanion, allowing for a peace for the woodsmen for a time. But it seems that wargs have an affinity for lands near the mountains, as during the events of the Lord of the Rings, in early 3019 of the Third Age, a group of wargs attacked the Fellowship of the Ring, but they were no match for the great warriors, and some fell before Gandalf, Aragorn, Boromir, Legolas, and Gimli, and the fire of Gandalf met the arrow of Legolas, slaying the warg chieftain, while the others fled. Now, later on in the Fellowship of the Ring tale, we learn that through the vision of Frodo at Amonhen, he saw the lands of the Bjornings burn. So I might imagine that wargs played some part in the skirmishes of Rovanion during the War of the Ring, back where they were during The Hobbit. Beyond this, the ultimate fate of the wargs is unknown to me. They participated more in the events of Peter Jackson's films, as well as many Middle-earth adaptations such as games, more so than they did in the canon of Tolkien's story. I might imagine that they, like orcs, goblins, and trolls in the wilds of the world, remained as a threat to travelers in Middle-earth for some time, but their evil would eventually be extinguished in the world of men. And so we come to the end of our tale on the vicious wargs of Middle-earth. From the wargs of Middle-earth, we see that, though the world is greatly explored, we must always remain wary, for there are always more mysteries, some that are dangerous, in the wild. 
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on the wargs of Middle-earth? Let me know in the comments below. Like many of the seeds planted in the garden of Tolkien's world building, wargs are another interesting facet of Middle-earth that I would love to learn more about if more information on them does ever become available. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings sword statues and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping and use the code WEST at checkout. And please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Blair Scout and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Anthony Harmon, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswell Project, Robert Bogue, and King of Games 2500. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on what was Saruman's plan to win the War of the Ring. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.